ranked second in the world. Weber, third in the world this year so far, Mark Ross. So number one and four in the world going at it for the first jewel of Boeing's Triple Crown, the U.S. Open Championship. The first one would, for Webb, it would be a second title for Marsha Holman. Webb, who has two victories, first shot, championship match. Gets them all. Five foot five, 145. And now up at 30 years of age, five feet nine, 140 pounds. The Tiger, Marshall Holman, uses the full approach. In this championship, he was never worse than seventh. His career in shooting in the U.S. Open has been something first, fourth, sixth, seventh, and 14th. 17 feet of the approach, Holman uses it all. A high hit, four, seven, nine, ten. Now, we'll see if he can keep his concentration, which can be a problem for Marshall. Marshall cuts right through the heart of the pin, leaves the four, seven, nine back here, and ten. A very difficult shot, but it's almost the same thing. Wonderlich left in that first match victory over Alan Granite. You attempt to convert it the same way that Wonderlich did. You have to slide that four pin over into the 9-10 zone. Doing a little uh, repair work, Bo, on that, um, that thumb hole, making it just a little tighter. Players have a tendency to have their thumb go down in size as they bowl longer in the day. Holman warmed up about two hours ago. He's rewarmed up again. He needs an extra piece of tape to make that thumb hole feel good. Checking his spot on the approach, he'll go for it. So beautifully done, certainly worth replaying to see how the pins floated across the deck. What a tough break. He gets the ball over in that 4-7 zone. Watch the action of the 4-pin. It slides by, nicks the 9-pin, and just bounces in front of the 10. Chris, once you get the 4-pin in that zone, it's at least an 80% mm -hmm. shot. You're going to convert it. Holman, a bad break to start off the match. 17-time champion. Beautiful follow through, and they danced off the deck at the end of that 60 foot stroke. Okay, Wayne Webb now, who started with a strike, can apply the pressure early here as he's ready to shoot in the second frame. The man that does a lot of sighting before he releases that ball. Chris, he looks down at the dots at the foul line, then up at the arrows, draws a line between the two, just like drawing dots for a little child, and tries to blanket the ball right over that line. Well, the five pin for Wayne Webb. Let's watch his uh, footwork. Wayne Webb only uses about 11 feet of the approach, as opposed to Marshall Holman's 17 feet. They both use a five-step delivery, and you see... Wayne Webb even slides much farther behind the foul line. He's almost a foot behind the line, so he uses about 10 feet of the approach. Holman uses a full approach for power. Fair for Wayne Webb. What a friendly area. Venice, Florida on the west coast. And it's uh, not a new place for the bowlers to come and compete. In fact, uh, Wayne's opponent, Marshall Holman, one here at Galaxy Lane, a tour event in 1983. And that's where Holman broke his bad TV streak, where he was one win in 15 losses. He won in Austin, Texas, then backed it up with a second victory here at Galaxy Lanes. Spare working, third frame. All right. With wins over Wonderlick and Dennis Jakes, Wayne Webb with a strike. Now the tournament leader. Marshall Holman, who has won six times and 20 times as a tournament leader. Key shot for Holman. He's bowling against one of the other great young players on the tour, Wayne Webb, who knows how to win. He can cut Webb's lead to one pin with a strike. And that is the situation here in the final game of the United States Open. Bowling proprietors, sponsored event. Here is Marshall's championship strategy. All week long, the lanes were tight, but he says they're hooking today, so he's going to play inside, which we've seen on all his shots, but the right lane hooks a little less, and we saw him just hit light, drive all the pins out. He'll play a little deeper line on the left-hand lane as he slowly prepares himself. He wants everything just right, a little piece of 
as Tal was on the floor. He can take the lead with a strike here, fourth frame. Bow's in that thumb hole to get the moisture out, get a good feel. He's all set. Leaving the two, four, five. One of the two champions that are bowling for a total of 58,000 here in the final match. The key pins, the five pin, the two pin, the four pin. Watch Holman drive the head pin to the sideboard, take out all the pins around it. The ball takes out the right side pins, the three, six, ten. Now, if that ball was a little higher, Chris, that head pin would have come back and taken out the two, four, five. Just another quarter of an inch, and it would have been a strike. Tentative for 38,000 right now, Marshall Holman. All right. Immense pressure on these two professionals here at Galaxy Lanes in Venice, Florida. You'll see more of the competition. But first, this message. Here now, the hand of one of only 26 players to have won 10 or more titles. One of eight last year to win over $100,000. He's done it three different years, and again, he has that problem. Chris, he just can't get the right feel in the thumb hole. It's so important. The fingers almost anybody can, can adjust their feel to, but the thumb is so important. He uses the fingertip grip, and he puts a lot of pressure on his thumb by hanging it down on the side like that. And when he gets it well over another foul line, you can bet it's a good shot. Now, there's a big, big loft. See that? And a 14-pin lead for Wayne Webb. Wayne Webb, who started in third in this field of five, has two victories now coming into this championship match. Loads it back up with Rosin. Championship round record. That's for all the times he's made the top five, 39 and 26. Going for a 24-pin lead. Boy, he snapped a six right around the mm -hmm. 10, and his head snapped at the exact same time. <laughs> Ooh. Changes balls. I wouldn't change balls right here, Chris. I'd keep the feel on one ball. Yes. Going to that lower surface friction ball, though, the one that's shinier so it doesn't bite the lane. Here's an improved spare shooter. He knows what he's doing. Cross lane. Very good. What do bowlers' thumbs really look like? <laughs> well, on the right, that happens to belong to Nelson Burton, Jr., <laughs> and a right-hander. And that's my left thumb. It hasn't been worn so much. <laughs> a lot of scar tissue over the years, and you can see on the inside, the inside of your, in your thumb there, the calluses in the base in the lower side. And all the players have that. Marshall loses the ball. And at the far end, well, he deserved that break after getting a 4, 7, 9, 10 bad break. And he, he looks about sticking at the line or something. Well, Chris, here's what happened. The ball hit right on the foul line, bounced back up. And a point of interest here, a ball, here, watch this replay. A ball cannot foul. He can release it behind the foul line. See the ball hit right on the foul line. Mm -hmm. and double bounces off the foul line. But the great arm swing of Marshall Holman was his savior any other player that I've seen in a championship round usually tries to guide the ball at the bottom of their swing. It would have been an errant shot. Accuracy saved him on that shot. Let's see if he capitalizes on that break and throws a double to cut the lead to three. All this in Venice, Florida, sort of discovered in the 1880s by Hamilton Diston and Frank Heigl. What a spot on the West Coast. Marshall Holman's line to the pocket. We've seen this before today. All the players taking that deep inside line. There's seven arrows on the lane. He's playing up around the fifth arrow from the right-hand channel or the third arrow from the left-hand channel. Oh, an aggressive shot. They came to play. Five frames left. Averts the split, leaving only the 10 pin on the right lane, which gets a long, hard look from Mr. Webb. Let's see if he changes balls for the spare. Yeah, he goes with that, the ball that goes straight. He's been very successful, has not missed a spare today. That's the big improvement of Wayne Webb's game in the last few years. He's become a very good spare shooter. We know he's got a powerful strike ball. Coming into this match, he had a total of 13 strikes 